Welcome back. Well, Rhett, you know, thanks for sticking with us. We just want to see how many times we can get you in the show today. Inconvenience, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we've never done a, a piece on fishing right. here before. You know, when I think of fishing, I think of just a lazy day, sitting back out on the boat, usually come back to shore empty-handed. But yeah. you recently <laughs> met a guy. That's not the case with him no, at all. No, not at all. David Dudley, I got to meet with him, a professional bass fisherman. He, like you said, you typically think about fishing, going out, having fun, drinking a pop. This guy, not the case. He's intense. He's exciting. Take a look. It makes you want to watch fishing on TV. Uh oh, that's, that's going to be a big one. Meet David Dudley, a professional angler in the Fisherman League worldwide. He is the all-time leading money earner of the FLW, with his career earnings just over $3 million. God laid fishing upon Dave's heart at a very young age, and he's been passionate about it ever since. That's what you talk going after one, boy. You know, when I was five years old, I used to answer the phone, Bassmasters Classic Champion, may I help you? And I knew at that age that what God had called me to do. Some people go through life and they hit college and they still like, I don't know what God wants me to do. I don't know where I'm going to go. At five years old, I know what I'm going to do for a living and God's got my back and we're going to make this happen. And it did happen. Dave had such a strong passion for fishing that getting up in the wee hours of the morning before a full day of school wasn't a deterrent. Me getting up before school to go fishing was not a problem. Me getting going fishing after athletic sports was not a problem. My senior year, my coach ended up kicking me off the team halfway through the year, and he I kept skipping a few practices here and there for fishing, and he warned me, he said, if you skip one more practice, you're off the team. Well, I skipped one more practice. We actually won the fishing tournament, so I come home with a big check, and he kicked me off the team. After high school, Dave was faced with a decision, college athletics or to start his career in fishing. I went and visited a couple schools for uh, football, and as soon as I visited the school, I knew right then and there, I said, school and college is not for me. It would be during this time Dave would learn of the early struggles pro fishermen face. You know, when you're first starting off fishing, getting a check at a tournament is very valuable because if you don't get a check and you don't, you can't establish yourself as one of the top professionals in the world, it's hard to come up with that money to keep going. So I put roofs on for three and a half years. I had no fingerprints on my hand. You couldn't even fingerprint me at the police station if you wanted to from all the asphalt on the shingles. But roofing is what supported me in fishing. But Dave continued down the path that he believed God called him to, and then it came, his first tournament win. You know, when I won my first uh, event, it wasn't like a shock to me that I won the event, but it was it was when you know you're in God's plan that when things happen, it's not like you're in shock or all that it happened, but it was like a confirmation of confirming that God's got my back. Since then, he has become one of the most successful anglers in the world, but he knows it wouldn't be possible without some help from upstairs. My success in, in fishing has been like a roller coaster. And, you know, truly God has been the success of all of it. But I look back and I laugh at myself because part of myself was like, all of a sudden I'd be doing good, I'd be successful. And then I, the flesh would take over and I'm like, you know what, I'm pretty good, I'm pretty good. And then God would humble you. He'd say, without me, you're nothing. And then all of a sudden my, my career would go down and I'd have to refocus, say, God, I surrender it all to you. And then God would lead me again back out on the water, lead me to the fish. And so it's been a, a, a real journey. It's, it's easier said than done to say, just trust in God. That's easy to say, but truly when you surrender everything over to God and let God take control, miracles can happen. Wow, what a great story, yeah. Rhett. You know, fishing, not an easy life there, especially when you have no. to go after it like him. Yeah, no, no, I was kind of like, hey, Dave, wh why on earth did you sink your head down the water, <laughs> go after this fish? And he was like, you have no idea how important that fish was to me. It was worth $45,000 wow, because no all the competition is done by weight of fish. So that fish right there got him an extra 45000 bucks. Man, I wish I yeah. could fish like that. I'd be yeah. fishing more often. <laughs> well, thanks, right. Rhett. I yeah, appreciate no it. Clement, back to you. Forty-five grand for a fish, huh? I need a new career. Meanwhile,